All right, please be close. Please, that's why I don't do it. Shut up. Um, hard to screw that one up. Uh, all right, so Rails Study Hall. It is your study hall. So you tell me what would be helpful for you. I know we had some setup issues this morning. We can go back over stuff. How can I help you begin to develop your proficiency with well, our Rails? Okay. So it helps to talk about how we'll actually apply it. Yeah. Cool. All right. Applying the fundies. I like that. So let's talk about those fundies. So everything in Rails starts with what? Nope. Conceptually, big picture, what causes Rails to do something? One thing. Starts with an H. HTTP request. This is a network request. This is a fetch call in JavaScript. This is typing in google.com in your browser and hitting enter. This is requesting a resource. Everything fires off of that. Starts off the whole shebang. So for our purposes, we care about two things in the HTTP request. Anybody remember what they are? Not the met path. Path is one of them. We care about the path and the, starts with an M, method. Method and path of an HTTP request kick off the entire thing. So give me an example of a method. Get. What else? Post. What else? Patch. Patch. What else? Uh, there's, updates. There's, there's, no, there's no update method. Uh, Common misconception. Fetch? Nope. No. Fetch is a JavaScript tool for creating these requests. Oh, okay. Delete. Delete is one. There's no update. Patch is sort of update. There's another one that's just like it. Also starts with a P. Put. Uh, technically, put is completely replacing a resource. Patch is updating part of a resource. But they get used almost interchangeably in Rails. All right, so those are the possible methods. Give me an example of a path. Slash home. Slash users. Slash users slash two. Those are examples of path. So an HTTP request has a method and a path and that kicks off the entire Rails experience. So Rails starts here. What's the first thing that intercepts that HTTP request and figures out what to do with it? The nope, the before the controller. All of this together is the API. Rails is a tool for helping create APIs. The f we're like trying to figure out inside the box a little bit. What are the big pieces? The thing that takes in an HTTP request is the router. Router's a switchboard. It goes, get request to this path. Cool, this, this action on this controller is handling that. It's a traffic cop. Points things to actions on controllers. So the request comes in, and then it sends it to a controller 
A controller is comprised of different actions. So router goes, cool, get users, this action handles that. So that action handles the request, and more often than not, one of the things that it has to do is look up that data from model. That's where we're starting to get back to home base. That's where our mod one projects, all that shit, active record works the exact same way. But that action is writing to or reading from that model and then, and then fires off what you think? There you go, an HTTP response. With very little exception, this pattern is, will match almost everything you do in Rails in this program. Request comes in, router matches it, looks up the right action on the right controller, does whatever it needs to do with the model, sends a response. That's it. So in practice, let's say I want to make a get request to, give me a noun. Dogs. Dogs, cool. Barkwire again, story of my goddamn life. I'm just kidding. Barkwire, by the way, is the app for uh, front end uh, showdown tonight. <laughs> All right, so we're going to do Rails new, uh, and you can follow along with this if you want. I'll go slow. Rails new back wire API 99, because I've done this one a bunch of times. Uh, I'm doing this. So what it's going to do is it's going to create a folder in whatever directory I'm in. So like your projects, folder, whatever. If you have a specific one for this mod. Before I run it, dash dash API. Otherwise, we get a bunch of HTML templating stuff that we don't need. And we miss out on some things that we very badly need. All right. Oop. And I got to use the correct version of Rails. Or Ruby, rather. Cool, so I, Rails new backwire. And it says all that stuff up. So I want to keep track of a list of dogs. So what this is going to do, I'm going to make a get request. To slash dogs. And like more specifically, I'm going to make a get request to HTTP colon slash slash localhost uh, comma 3000 slash dogs. Whatever is running this server, slash dogs. The router needs to be looking for that. There needs to be a controller that can handle that. There needs to be an action on the controller that can handle that. There needs to be a model that represents the dogs that I can look stuff up on, get those back, return them. So the first thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to go into the router. Oops, I need to get into the directory also. So in this, 
directory. I've got this whole Rails set up. I'm going to go into the config slash routes RB file. This is the router. It doesn't have anything right now, but that's what it is. What I want to do is say the method and then what the path that this is going to match is. I'm going to say get dogs. And my rail is a little rusty, but I think I still remember the syntax for this. Comma, or uh, then two, colon, and then it's going to expect my controller and my action. So I want to send this to the dogs controller index action. And now that y'all are getting savvy with JavaScript, we can start kind of, I think, more effectively peeling apart uh, some of this goofy Ruby syntax shit. That's just, in JavaScript, what we would call an object. In Ruby, what we would call a hash. That's all that is. So get, and also, if we're kind of making this look like how JavaScript looks, the function we're calling passing in a string and a hash. That's all that's happening there. But in Rails land, you tend to see it kind of like that. Questions about anything so far? So what? Uh, that's how we're separating the controller from the action. That's that's Rails magic. So Rails doesn't exist. Doesn't exist. So it's expecting that a controller named dogs exists that has an action called index. Um, so great question. There's a couple conventional actions that we expect to exist on controllers. And if we name them right, Rails does everything for us. Index, list everything. Um, shoot, it's not get. Show. Um, list one thing. So index is listing everything, show is listing one thing. And by convention, we'd say that that's slash dogs. This one would be slash dogs slash some particular dog. Then we expect one to exist called create. Also, those are get dogs, get dogs one, create, make a new one, and we expect that to be a post to dogs. Uh, we expect there to be an update action. that updates a dog. And we expect that to be either put or patch to slash dogs slash a particular dog. We have one uh, called destroy uh, that deletes A dog, and that's a delete call to 
a particular dog. And that's it. If we were doing templates, which I think the stars were not, we'd have two more um, for uh, getting the pages to edit a dog and getting the pages for making a new dog. If you've made them, yeah. Okay. And this format, this isn't actually all that Rails specific. These actions, the concept of actions in general, that's a Rails specific thing. But that these methods and these path patterns do these things is a philosophy called REST. Anybody pick up on what that stands for? It's an acronym. What the fuck? You guys don't know that it stands for Representational State Transfer? For, and it was Roy Fielding's 2001 doctoral dissertation? God, are you guys even developers? I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it was. There's a guy named Roy Fielding and his computer science doctoral dissertation was about this theory called REST. That it's not even really a theory. It's an architecture pattern for um, that basically just does this. Because before, how we used to do this is you would use POST for everything, uh, and every single app did it slightly differently. You go, all right, well, POST, and then send me an object that has the thing that you want me to do, and all of them were slightly different formats. And REST was a way to standardize on one way to do this. And so 90% of APIs that you work with do something approximately like this. That's really nice. Pokemon API, Magic Card API, all of them are kind of structured like this. Hmm? Uh, yeah, uh, we call them RESTful APIs. The thing that preceded it was called SOAP, uh, and it sucked. Uh, there was another one called RPC, another kind of pattern, that's actually still sort of around. You use it for things like upvoting. RPC makes a lot more sense than REST for that. And I'll also say that this is a dying pattern. It's still ubiquitous. It's everywhere. But that will not be the case in like four or five years. Anybody know what's replacing it? Get in job posting all the time, hot meetup topic. It's called GraphQL. Um, because, uh, you know, hands are in pretty hard right now, but the, uh, essentially all this is doing is making a way for you to access a database from a network. GraphQL is a way more direct way of doing that. You're essentially executing SQL calls over a network instead of kind of having this pretense of rest. Don't worry about it though, these aren't going anywhere tomorrow. They're still the way that things are done today. All right, so, and also, be very glad you're in this program and not in a computer science program somewhere because <laughs> there's this thing that grads of programs like this always do, it's like computer science envy. You're like, well, I, I learned a lot, and I can make software, and I got a job, and I'm on my third or fourth job, and I'm, I'm technically a senior engineer now, but like, if only I'd gotten a computer science degree, I'd really know how this stuff works. And uh, a handful of former students of mine have like tried to remedy that by going back and getting masters in CS. And one of them uh, was like, I was in this like. Uh, uh, application architecture class, and we're learning all about SOAP. And I was like, why aren't we learning about REST? And my professor said, well, maybe REST will like uh, have the market penetration someday, but it really just isn't there. SOAP is the way things are done. And she's like, she's a senior engineer at Yale Education now. She's like, no, it's not. It's super fucking not. SOAP died like 10 years ago. Um, so there you go. All right, so this is back on track. These are the patterns that we're looking for. These are the action names that we're going to conventionally use. 
So we want a, an HTTP request that goes to the dog's controller, gets and hits the action index, but we don't have a dog's controller, we don't have an actions, uh, an index action. So what we do, Rails G or Rails generate, either way, controller dogs, plural. Models are singular, controllers are plural. plural. Nate. Made this app controllers dogs controller RB file. Let's take a peek in there. If I go to app controllers dog controller RB, I get this boilerplate. And if I want to make an actions index or a, an index action. Def index, cool. Now that exists. And we can prove that it exists too. If we just um, do render JSON and then we need to give it a hash and we'll say like message, hi. So if we have the flow of all of this correct, that I can send this HTTP method with this path, the router sends it to the correct action on the correct controller, I should see this come back. So let's see if it does. If I do Rails S to serve it, so this is on localhost 3000 right now. Did everybody get Postman installed? I'd recommend it. We can do it in the browser for right now. So over here in browser land, I'm going to localhost 3000 slash dogs. I see the data. No shit. That's Rails. That's like most of what we do. Yeah. Let's see if I'm just over, over contexting this. I did Rails new. And then my, yeah. How strange. Give me a um, shoot Rails dash V.
Oh, interesting. No, it should still be the same. Try Rails generate. All right, are we successfully getting something to show up here? Yeah. Give me, a, uh, give me a fist of five. What are we doing? I got it, baby. Yes. Okay. So let's uh, <laughs> make sure that everybody. Yes, sir. Yeah, after you get the raise control, it's best
shape now. We're going to do all these steps over again. We're going to get some reps in. So I'm going to get out of this folder, nothing up this sleeve, nothing up this sleeve. But remember, when you run Rails new, two important things. You need to tell it we're building an API. That's not the default. You don't get that JSON helper for free. Like, that's an extra thing we install. Also, when you start integrating with the front end, you're going to get a thing called an access control allow origin error in your browser when you try to do it. You have an easy way to handle that if you start it as an API. It's hard to add these things after. Also, when we do Rails new by default, we get a ton of like garbage HTML generation shit that we just don't need. So use the dash dash API flag. Also, um, it will make a folder for you wherever you are. If you want to do it in the current folder you're in, you do Rails new dash dash API dot to tell it it should be named whatever the current directory is. That's your options. All right, so I'm in my practice folder. I'm going to say Rails new um, BK wire API 
dash dash API. It's important. DK wire is trying to get me to move his foot. I did back wire before. Yeah. Oh, I see. Um, all right, so now I have this folder. I go to BK wire, and I can tell that I'm there because if I LS, I see all this fine stuff. So then I'm going to go into my route. I'm going to say, all right, if you do a get request to dogs, comma, I would like you to send that to the dogs controller index action. Cool. That's all we need in there. But we don't have a dogs controller. So we Rails G controller dogs. Cool. We go into that dogs controller. We make an index action. And where we got before was render JSON and we gave it a hash to render. Cool. So if I Rails S that, it's on 3000, I go over here, I get my message. A couple of you are running into uh, adversary in use uh, error. If you have light server running, port 3000 is a default for tons of things. So if you run into that problem, we need to give it another port to run on. So we do port equals, uh, it just needs to be something else and probably something over 3000. Some of the lower ports are already reserved for other things, but over 3000, you're probably in good shape. Cool. Questions so far? Yeah. Good question. So if we go back to this controller, what we did when this gets the HTTP request, So it's been routed to the right action. Awesome. We're firing this method over here. We're telling it what we want to do. And right now we're saying, take this hash, make it JSON, and send it back. Render fires off the HTTP response. JSON takes a hash and makes it a JSON string. Mm -hmm. So we get to choose like what buttons and what inputs mm -hmm. send what requests, right? So like if you've got like a Twitter app, mm -hmm. someone like hits submit, we can choose like, okay, that's like a post request to our database and our store that we can like yes. render with that really quick. Exactly. This would be another way of writing the same thing, if that makes more sense. Also, there's another way of writing that same thing that kind of makes more sense. Now that you have JavaScript brain, also the exact same thing. We're calling a render function that's built in, giving it a hash that takes that. Magical. But nine times out of 10 in Rails land, you see it written more like that. Cool, other questions so far? Cool, I don't want to hard code a bunch of messages and shit though, I want some dogs. So now that, now that we have some confidence that everything's wired up okay, now we got to start making a dog model. This part should feel familiar. This is exactly how we did it in mod one. I can go over to backwire 
and say Rails G model dog, singular, one dog. This is the cookie cutter for a dog, not a cookie cutter for dogs. Rails G model dog. This did two things. It made us a migration, made us the dog model. And what's fucking cool about this is that dog model that it made for us, if we don't have to make any relationships, we're done. That model's ready to go. Um, if we do need to make relationships, works the same way, belongs to, has many, has many through, same kind of thing. So let's go over to that migration that it made for us. And hey, this looks kind of familiar. I go t.string name, t.age, or t.number age, and t.image URL, fuck, I keep doing that, string image URL, and cool, that's the shape of a dog. So I save that, and then what do I do? Rails DB migrate. Same as before. Rails DB migrate. And then it throws an error, because of course it does. Stop making me look dumb in front of my friends. All right. Uh, undefined method number. Oh, it needs to be integer. Rails DB migrate makes a table. Yep. Could you have done all this like defining the columns like in your um, what Rails G model? Yes, you can also do that in the command line. I never remember the syntax for it though, and once you get comfortable with this stuff, you tend to move kind of fast. And so I'm fast enough with this, and I have 400 command line APIs that I'm trying to juggle. So that's why I did it that way. You can absolutely do that on the command line. Other questions so far? So give me a fist to five on whether or not your migration worked. What are we doing? I got it. Cool. You good? Okay. So we have a table. Now let's make some puppies. So if we go over to db slash seeds rb, Hey, what do you know? Exactly like mod one. We can make some seeds. And then, anybody remember the first thing we want to do when we're making seeds? Uh, dot destroy all. Dot destroy all. It's a little grim in this case, but <laughs> don't think too hard about it. Luckily, they're not real dogs. So, why do we do destroy all first? It doesn't create like Yep, I want to be able to rerun the seed command over and over and over again. Because you're testing. You're like, okay, does delete work? Delete, 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 delete. Cool, all my dogs, oh man, now I don't have any to test the next method with. You always want to be able to just rerun seeds and get back to the same state really quickly. That's the point of them. Okay, so I destroy all the dogs, and then I create some dogs. See, playing God ain't so bad. <laughs> Cool, so make a couple dogs. Uh, Bixby's, I don't know, died a few years ago, 19. So, well, like, he didn't make it that far, so don't think too hard about it. Um, and then the other thing was image URL. It's all right, I finished crying. Uh, Bixby, <laughs> just making it worse, aren't I? Um, This is a pretty good dog. Um, if anybody wants to see real Bixby, God, I'm really just digging it, aren't I? Yeah. 
so oh, no, that was my. This is Bixby. Oh, please. Yeah, that was my. That was my little bud. He uh, he he got stitches and he kept picking at them, and so I put him in one of my weaker than shirts. Um, he had a sweet face. Uh, uh, Chow German Shepherd. Yeah. Yeah, that was my bud. Um, uh, the one behind, the one behind him is Mesa, oh. the other stock dog that I keep using in these stock things. Stock dog. Um, all right, so I do that. And I got Mesa. Mesa was a little younger. And then Ted. Ted's pretty little. Yeah. All right, so we've got some seeds. And if we run what? Rails DB seed. Rails DB seed. They go in the Durda base. Hell yeah. So this model does all the hard work of connecting to the database for us. Thanks, Active Record. Cool. So now we have a way to get all the dogs. How do you think I do that? Dog dot all. Dog dot all. It's really that easy. Dogs equals dog dot all. And how about I render? <coughs> Dogs. Neat. Wonder if it works. If I Rails S and check out what's happening on old port port three thousand. Hey, what do you know? I made my own API. In the controller, oh, I'm saving an instance variable that I'm setting equal to dog dot all. That's literally all that goes into making a basic API. Can you, can you go back to mm -hmm. Go back to what? Yep. Got rid of all the dogs, made a couple. No, like, you can do that. Works the same. Ruby, Ruby is disgustingly loose with syntax. Makes me want to vomit. <laughs> no, they're also Ruby, but Ruby, almost everything is optional. In fact, I don't even think I need the uh, parentheses on those. Can I see the controller request? <laughs> I think I have to keep them on the same line, but yeah, if I do that and that, and then just jam all those together like that, I think that also works. Rails DB seed. Still works. Stupid fucking language. <laughs> yep, that, that runs the seeds, just like it did in mod one.
Just look up them dogs. I love them dogs. All right, questions so far? Let's review. We sent an HTTP request to dogs. The router went, cool, I know where that should go. That should go to this action on this controller. Inside of that action, it looked up, it called an active record method on the model, got all the dogs, and then responded with them. That's Rails. So uh, URL submissions are always requests <laughs> like immediately? Like hmm? if you try to go to a URL that's immediately just a get request to If you type something in the browser and hit enter? Yeah. Okay. That's the only way you can do that. One over here? Gage. Um, on index by controller action, yeah. what was was that there because it's looking it up by index? Nope. Because I can also make an action called show. And it needs to know which of these actions on the controller it should go to. For example, if I go back to the router, I may also make one called dogs ID. It's going to be a placeholder for any kind of ID you might want to send to dogs. And I don't want to send that one to dogs index. I want to send that one to dogs show. And inside the show, I don't want every dog, I want the thing that I was sent. And so I want dog dot cell. <laughs> no, almost. How do I locate a particular dog by ID? Find. Find. And the way you get Rails uses one um, hash for all of these things. The way that you get what's called a dynamic URL segment, that's this ID right here, or a query param. If you've ever seen a URL that has a question mark and then a bunch of key value pairs, that's called a query param. If you want to get something that was actually sent over in the body of the request, you get those with params, and it's a hash. You just get the thing by a symbol. Cool. And then that's not dogs. That's a dog. Ta-da. And now if I Rails S and do dogs slash one. Uh -oh. uh -oh. Did I reseed? Oh, I think I receded. Yeah, you did. So what what are all the dogs that I have now? All right, so they start because it redoes it keeps the same IDs going. You can, but I didn't. That gives me one back now. What's the difference between Rails BBC and Rake BBC? Because I accidentally did Rake BBC and noticed that the ID is the same as what yours is doing. So uh, Rake is the old way that you did it. Um, it actually technically is still rake under the hood, but they just simplified the API and they use Rails for to prefix all of them. I see. But for the last 15 years, it was rake. I see. So with that show, think back to rest. I was getting something that matched that pattern. That's a list one thing. That's a show action. So I made a route for that. I went to the dogs controller, but this time I went to the show action. And then that went to the model, went to the database, came back, came back, fired off the response. Questions before I move on? When I type local versus ID slash dog slash age, is it correct that it's a duplicate format? Hmm, you might not be 
be firing off the response was here in store. Yep, you have to respond. So you're just stuck in this action. And then what if you add an ID just So remember, the thing that triggers a response being fired is the render function. If you don't call that, it's just going to spin because it's exp it thinks you're doing something that's super computationally intensive and you're just waiting for that to be done before you fire off the response. Cool, what else? Yep, those are our five standard actions. Mm -hmm. Correct. So, on that note, if I were doing the other ones, I post to dogs and that should go to dogs create. And maybe I patch to dog's uh, ID, and that goes to dog's update. And I delete dog's ID, and that goes to dog's destroy. So you can imagine if I have 20 models in here, I end up typing something that looks exactly like that a fucking lot. So there's a shorthand for it. resources. This and this are identical. Turns those five lines of code into one. <laughs> Is it supposed to be a symbol? Let's try it. So if I do dogs and Comment those out, run the server. Yeah. Rails is actually like too forgiving about the difference between strings and symbols, <laughs> I think. But, yeah. And this is real nice. Let's say, uh, like in our case, all we have is an index and a show. It created a. Uh, oops, and that last one should. This should be create. Um, but we don't have a create. We don't have an update. We don't have a destroy. What if we accidentally call those routes? We can also do only, and it takes an array of the ones that we want. So we can say only index and show. Sick. No, that's called uh, security through obscurity. It's like, hey, you'll never figure out how this works. Um, that doesn't work. If you want to prevent somebody from doing something, that's where authentication authorization come in. Cool. Other questions about resources as a shorthand for this? Pretty sick, huh? All right, let's um, let's show how easy it is to make something. But for this, we can't use our browser. When you type something into a browser, all it knows how to do is get requests. So if we need to do post, patch, delete, that doesn't work. So I'd like you to install a tool called Postman. The collaborative platform for API development. Yeah. Download, install, por favor. <coughs> God damn right they do. <laughs> and when you're ready to go, you will show me that by having both hand up on your screen. Go back here. Thank you. 
you've made in the cloud so when you inevitably end up reinstalling this 400 times like I do uh, <laughs> you have all your requests you've made it's not bad well it also I don't think it works very well so there's that too debugging and manual testing. Cool, so Postman is what we call a headless browser. It is exactly like your Chrome, your Firefox, what have you, except you get a ridiculous amount of control over the requests and examining the responses. So for example, uh, that get dogs request that I was making earlier, I can pick which method I want to use over here. I want to make a get request to localhost 3000 slash dogs. And it gives me that. I can display it a bunch of different ways. I can look at my uh, response headers super easily. I can see any cookies that came back. I can see the headers that I sent. Um, I can, if there's any auth stuff, it's really easy to enter in there. Uh, and, cool thing for our purposes, I can actually enter in a body to send over. So what we want to do is we want to figure out how to create dogs. It's a question we've wondered through the ages. To create a dog, what's the, what's the method for creating a dog? HTTP method. Post. So I changed get to post. And then what's the path? that goes with create. Same. Yep, slash dogs. Because I'm not saying I want to create a particular dog. It doesn't exist yet. I don't know its ID. How would I do that? So localhost 3000 dogs post. Method, path. Over here on this body tab, we want to select raw. And this drop down over here, we want to pick JSON. And then we're going to type a JSON string. It starts with curly braces. And then this is the most important part of JSON. Anytime you're doing this by hand, the part you're probably going to screw up the most, everything has to be double quotes, keys to. 
So we say name in double quotes, colon. Um, this is another flat iron dog. Teddy. Okay. Age. You can do numbers. You do booleans. Those don't have to be in quotes. But age still has to be in double quotes, not single quotes, not back ticks. Double quotes. Uh, Teddy's five. And then image URL. I'm going to leave it blank. You can't do trailing commas in JSON. You can in JavaScript, not in JSON. You'll know you fucked something up when you see this little red X. Cool. This is the body of our request. Uh, maybe. That's as, that's as much as I can do. Post, path, body, raw, JSON, this string. We don't have any way to handle this yet, though. So over in Rails land, if you got rid of or, or never made the individual one, you can add create to our resources thing. Pop over to the controller. We need to make a create action. Def create and this one will say dog equals dog dot create and we can say name. How did I get stuff that I'm sending over from the request? I'm sending over a name and an age and an image URL. How did I access that, like with the ID? Nope. That's what fired off the response. Params. I'm sending data over, no matter where it is, it's on this params hash. Params, name, age, params, age, image URL, params, image URL. So this creates a dog. And if we just do this, it gets made in the database. But the thing that was happening to Arena earlier happens. It just spins. Why? Got to render. Got to tell it we're done. And so what we probably want to do in this case is render the dog that we just made. And there's an important reason we do that, too. The reason we want to send back the dog we just made is what one piece of data do we not have? We know the name, we know the age, we know the image URL, we sent it. What are we missing? ID. The ID. The database creates the ID. So I might need that on my front end. So the standard response for creating something, send back the record you just made, including the ID. All right, so that exists now. I'm routing to it. I'm routing to the dog's controller, create action. I create the dog. I render the thing that I just made. Let's see what happens. Making a post request to dogs, raw, JSON, this. Fingers crossed. Hey, look at old ID7. Correct. That big blue button fires off the request that you just built. Can you 
I created the dog, I saved the dog that I just made, and then I rendered it as JSON. Pretty dope. So I could have done it this way with resources, or I could have done it this way with individual routes. Same thing. Questions? It's a developer version of a browser for debugging things like APIs. What else? So that was applying the fundies. You guys want to do it again? Something else you want to know about Rails? Want to see more methods? It's your study all. Yeah. Got a half an hour. So, um, give me a different noun. Cats. Cat wire. Uh, what was it? <laughs> no, no. Not doing it. Um, okay, nothing up this sleeve. Nothing up this sleeve. Um, all right, I'm making a cat's API. What do I do? Rails, new, catwire, dash dash API, I learned that one. Good. Oops, I gotta use the right version of Ruby. Correct. Yes. Okay. All right. So then I go into Catwire. If I don't go into Catwire, none of my commands work. Neat. Uh, I want a uh, get a show. Uh, sorry, index a show and I create for cats. So let's do it this way. Let's start with the back, and we're going to work to the front, and uh, we're going to do step by step. Chris, where should I start with this? Okay, I want to make an index, a show, and a create. All I have is a scaffolded, empty ass app right now. Give me a place to start. We can start from the front of this. We can start from the back of this. Got to start somewhere, though. Like, you mean do you want to start in your route? Sure. I like it. So I go into my routes. Give me one step. This is your resource query. Mm -hmm. Cool. Well, cool. Okay. Um, um, only 
Good. Yep. Mm hmm. Good. So that's exactly what we're going to do. My advice to you don't put ones in that you're not ready to make right now. So we'll say, all right, only index. Excellent. Katie, give me a next step. That's fine. So I have a route. I can intercept a request to slash cats, but it's going to expect me to what? Recreate the controller. Nope. So how do I do that? Mm hmm. Love it. Cats, plural. Models are singular. Controls, controllers are plural. A lot of times Rails will catch you if you make a mistake and fix it for you. But it helps to know. All right, sick. Priscilla, give me a next step. Uh huh. Okay. 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 Cool. Now we've kind of a uh, we've inherited some debt here, though. This is what we want to have, but Joe, what do I need for this to work? This is exactly what this index method needs to look like. But if I run this right now, if I Rails S this, it's going to barf at me. Why is that? A cat. Also that, the class and the migration. Most importantly, the. Also the table. <laughs> Collectively referred to as the. Model. There we go. So Joe, how do I make a model? Cat, singular. Very nice. Um, all right, Gage. What am I doing now? OK. So let's take a look at what generating that model made for us. Uh, among other things, made these two files. That's a hint. Before that, before we can seed it, so we didn't do, it's not Rails migrate, it's Rails so that's the command hmm what do we just migrate? So there's your hint. What do I need to do? What did I just roll back? Uh, Not the table. It's the thing that makes the table. The mm. Also starts with an M, though. Migration. There we go. So if I go over to the migration. All right, Gage, what am I doing in here? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Sure. Give me one more. ID we get for free. We can do age, but as I learned, there's no number. We really want an integer. Perfect. All right, so now that I've made this, Mohammed, what am I doing? Yep, let's migrate it. So now that I've migrated it, Cool, I have this uh, Neato cats migration. So Mohammed, what's my next step gonna be? The table exists, controller's all wired up correctly. We need to seed it. Cool, Ben, how do I seed it? Okay, so how do I do that? Cat dot new? Not new, create. We can do it with new, anybody. What's the difference between new and create? New will create it, but it won't like, put it into the original Right, how do I make it put it in the database? Then you have to save it. Then you have to save it, very nice. Create does both of them in one step. Um, all right, excellent. So I'm gonna create some. Uh, our lean, there's one thing that we didn't do in this seed that we kinda need to. What is it? Oh, destroy, all. destroy all. Destroy those cats. <laughs> all right, so I made some, destroyed some cats. I created some cats. Martin, what do I do next? Uh, let's seed it. Rails DB seed. Sick. Um, how do I find out whether or not it worked? Uh, I, I'm not talking to you. I didn't know you were talking to me. I could. I could do Rails C, then do cat.all. Neat. Got back some cats. What now? Like Console. It's kind of like um, invoking a binding.pry of just your application. It's really only useful for what I just did, if you want to take a look at models and stuff. How do you get out of that? Uh, control D, good question. Um, okay, they're in there. I think everything's wired up okay, but how would I know for sure, Martin? Okay, what what server? Oh, Rails S. That sounds like a good idea. Okay, so I'm running this. It didn't blow up. Didn't throw any errors. Martin, how am I gonna see these cats over the wire? I could go to my browser, or even better, I could go to Postman, localhost 3000, cats, 404, oops, because I'm posting still. Cool, there's Missy and Buster, sick. Um, all right, Lizzie. How did you get 3404? Uh, I was posting to cats, I need to get Cats. Cool, Lizzie. Um, we we have a successful index action now. Now I want a show action. So what's the first thing that I need to do? Mm -hmm. Close our output to Excel. Love it. And then next up, Lizzie. I have a controller for cats. What do I not have? Um, a right, and we have a special term for methods in controllers. Action. 
Cool, so I'm gonna make a show action and then uh, arena. What am I putting in here? Cats? Cat. Okay. Mm, don't want every cat? No. I want one cat. How do I do that with active record? Mm? I wanna I wanna try to get it by ID and an active record we do that with. This is my gang sign. Gang sign. Dev sign. That's part of it. The word I'm looking for. There we go. And what do I put inside of dot find? Params. Params what? What are, what are the params? So the ID of that cat. There we go. And where is it getting that ID from? Where's that ID come from? How does it know which dog to get? That right there. Okay, so it's gonna read that. Finds the cat, baller. Now what? Sick, let's see if it works. Um, cat, <laughs> how would I find out whether or not this works? Cool, how do I know which ones I have available? Uh, there. They're right there. All right, let's see if I can get Buster. There's Buster, it works. Okay, uh, cool. So, Damon, let's get started on last thing we need. I need to be able to create a cat. All right. Uh, add colon create. Right. Beautiful. Right. Now what? Uh, go to your controller. Write a message for it. Okay. So What's it called? Create. Good. And it's a method, but in the context of a controller, it's also called an Chain. Very nice. All right, what happens in here? Um, so we're going to do, we want to like make sure, so the add cat Good. equals cat.create, and then we want the answer to this. Good. Um, we're going to want the attributes of the cat. So we're going to want name, colon, and then since we are creating it, Mm -hmm. Contain to it, so it'll be params, uh, brackets, colon, name. And, and then the same thing for age, but I want to do age for the current, so we have name for age. Good, very nice. And then? Um, oh, can we don't want the energy URL? Because that's what we did for that. We didn't do it for this one. Cool, that looks pretty good to me. Andrew, how would I find out whether or not this worked? You could try to send a post request to post it. Yeah, so I'm gonna send a post request. Uh, what path do I do that for that though? Uh, I think it's at. Yeah, okay, then what? Then, um, yeah, up there exactly. Uh, you're gonna wanna put the curly brackets and start using the arrows. Good, um, I've already done most of it. <laughs> Oops. All right, pick a name for this cat. What did I do wrong here? Um, comma, trailing comma. Trailing comma, can't have them. Uh, all right, give me a cat name. Milo. That is a good cat name. That's a nice cat. 
Cool. Uh, sorry, what, what did I press? I forget. Send. There it is. That's right. Cool. So I got that back. And then, Andrew, how would I find out whether or not I have the three cats that I should have now? Uh, you could go back to cats and maybe get requests. I have cats. Get request. Ah. And one, two, three cats! Ah, 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 ah. <laughs> All right, 15 minutes. Not bad, class. Um, that's how you make APIs. So uh, we are missing two methods still, though. Delete. Delete's a pretty easy one. Yeah. Okay. Did you add create as one of our methods in the router? Yeah. Cool. So, if I want to delete, mm, let's start over again. Chris, how am I going to delete a cat? Oh, I see Colin hiding back there. Colin. I'm trying to delete cats now. This is new territory. We haven't talked about this yet. Let's see if we can intuit our way through this, because it's all the same patterns. Colin, what am I going to start with? Uh, just delete. Mm, is it delete? I feel like it's a slightly different word in Rails. Destroy. Destroy. Okay. Um, okay, that's the right name for this action, but I have no idea how we're going to get here. Yeah, Ben. You can name any method. Yeah. So uh, if you name them index, show, create, destroy, update, you get all kinds of rail stuff for free. You can call them anything you want, but now I can't do this resources magic. It doesn't all work the same way. Um, now I need to start saying this action, this controller, I have to get very granular with it. If you follow the conventions, you get free things. Um, okay, so Colin, I've got this destroy action. How am I going to get to it? Um, ask cat. Hmm? Uh, I don't even know how this action is going to fire. Allow it in the route. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. What else, Colin? Cool. Hmm. I've got the instance. Yeah. It's a beautiful thing. Now, Chris, we haven't talked about this yet, but. If I do this right now, it's going to get rid of the cat in the database, and then it's going to hang forever. Why? I asked Chris. Because there's no render. But what do we render? What is there to render? So I don't remember the um, syntax for this off the top of my head, so I'm going to look it up. We want to render a status code. There's no information to render. So we're trying to render status code 204. 204 is no content, and it indicates that the request is successful. It worked. Don't worry about it. I got rid of the cat. But uh, I don't have anything else to tell you other than it worked. So I'm going to say Rails, JS, Rails render status code. Status code. Render status. There you go. So instead of render JSON, we're going to render status 204. Um, cool. Katie, how do I find out whether or not this worked? OK. So uh, my hint is that it's with the tool that we learned today. I'll also tell you that 
As far as I know, this is all wired up correctly right now. All right, let's help him out, class. Postman. So, Katie, what do you think I can do in Postman, keeping in mind our, our magic here? What's the one thing I have to do in Postman to try to delete a cat? OK. Yeah. Well, we wrote the code for that. How do I do that in Postman? What's the one thing I have to change in Postman? Yeah, the little drop-down guy. What's that called? Starts with an M? Method. Method. So if I do that, and then I have to have a particular kind of path, too. I can't delete all the cats. I have to delete what? A certain cat. And I delete them by what? ID. ID. Cool. So I want to get rid of Milo. Sorry, Milo. Oh. All right. So if this works correctly, I should see status code 204. There it is. Oh. Status 204. Status 204 came from, in this destroy action, we destroyed the cat, found it, destroyed it, and then we rendered status 204. We are running JSON before, but there's no data to render with this. So we're just telling it, just send back this status code. Sure. 204 is the standard status code for deleting something. So in the same way that 404 is standard for something's missing, 400 is standard for you fucked up, uh, 500 is standard for I fucked up. 200 is it's okay and here's your content. 204 is it's okay and there's no content to give you. Anybody know what the status code for creating something is? Ooh, so what I'm hearing is we need to talk about status codes tomorrow. Not 203, good guess though. 201. Oh, man. 201 is created. It worked, and I also I made something over here, and here's the thing that I made. Okay, so uh, we destroyed this. It is gone, and we can prove it if we get all of the cats. Priscilla, how do I get all the cats? Um, yep. Ta da! And there's one cat, two cats. Sick. OK, now, last method, and we know everything we need to know about making APIs, kind of. Joe, we're trying to update a cat, change their name, change their age, something like that. Where do you think I start? Oop, before that. Yeah. So, I actually need to simplify something here. Yeah, why don't I just get rid of all the only stuff? Because I can do everything with the cat's resource now. All right, Joe, now what, am I, what do you think I'm going to do in the controller? For, good guess, patch is the method, the action is called update. Very nice. All right, and then same pattern, everything we've done before. What do you think I'm going to put in this method? Mm -hmm. I like it. Now what? I'll 
I'll give you a hint. It's not surprising. Cat dot. Help Joe out. Update. Update. That's exactly what it is. Cool. So Joe, what do you think I put in here? Name and there we go. Exact same things I did with create. Oops. Uh, exactly. If this was like a special update age only method, that's exactly what you do. You're not required to update everything. For example, we're not updating the ID. All right, so I updated the cat, and then uh, let's see, gauge. What am I doing next? Love it. All right. Can I uppercase Buster's name? Uh, Mohammed, how would I do that? Uh, nope, post makes up the new. Okay. Good. And then Yep. Just got to change the shit. So I can change that to Busta. And he's a little bit older now. Cool. Comes back. But did it stick? Ta da. That is Rails APIs. What questions have you? This is the last time we're ever going to talk about Rails. <laughs> We took three weeks of Rails out of the program and replaced it with two hours. <laughs> yeah. Um, what do you want to add this up or you can um, both and all the before? How would you want to do it? Ah, we need to deploy it. Um, and we'll talk about that another day. But there's a service that we'll use called Heroku. Um, we'll, we'll take this, we'll put this in a Git repo, we'll commit the changes we made. And we'll get a special kind of endpoint that's not on GitHub somewhere else. And then every time we push there, it'll be available on the internet. Pretty cool. What else? What else do you want to know? I don't know what I want to know. You fucking tired yet? I am. I'm not your dancing monkey, okay? Well, you were just dancing. Yeah, I was second. literally just dancing and acting like a monkey. <laughs> all right. That was, I think that was tiring for all of us. So uh, let's call it. I'm going to send out the survey. Thank you very much.